right? And you can perhaps uh, tell me uh, how you look at this particular scenario of the process of writing, which uh, we have been doing for a very long time. And I'm very sure that you must have started writing examination, writing answers without much discrimination, without much knowing what is what for a very long time, right from maybe first standard onwards when writing is introduced to you. But so far, so far you have been writing answers without actually knowing whether you're writing it right or wrong. You just write whatever comes to your mind. Brahmananda was actually telling I mean, editing a story uh, today about the question on sonnet. And this is very I mean, uh, uh, interesting because that particular student, may maybe I, I don't find fault with him or he her, because he or she has never been told how to answer questions in the examination. Because you never get a training for speaking English. You never get a training for listening to English, though many of you are good listeners in the classroom, but you never had any training. You never get any training for writing, though many of you are good writers. That is by default. It happens at times. And many of you do not have any training for uh, even uh, reading, though many of you are good readers. So it happens naturally, right? Certain people are interested in certain things. Certain people are good in certain things. That happens by default. But actually, when I ask you a question, are you actually competent in write, to write? Are you competent to speak? I, have you ever gone, undergone a particular training program? No. Do you think this is uh, this can happen without any training program, without any training? But we are walking, we are drinking water, we are eating something without any training. But does it go in that same fashion? No. You can be better by a training. Not that you're bad. You can be better, much better by a training. So that is my attempt today, right? I'm trying to tell you how exactly you need to write the examination. And my focus today is two things, narrative and descriptive styles, narrative and descriptive styles. So, but I'll be talking generally about how to write, how do you plan and write and revise. And there are definitely, I would like to very clearly categorize your writing into two. One, writing for the examination, which is demands an altogether set practices and also writing research paper and writing serious articles where you get a lot of time and you also get time for revision. Whereas in the examination hall, you may not have the time for revision. So I would like to make a distinction initially between what you write in the classroom and what you write outside the classroom. Many of you, I think I'm very sure are familiar with assignments. You have been submitting assignments right from your first year degree class, I'm very sure. But how many of you have done it all by yourself? That's a question. I don't want to raise any, you to raise any hands. I'm, I, I'll be afraid whether there will not be any many hands, definitely. So what we do is we copy paste, right? And our teachers also, they don't find fault with that. Even I don't find fault with that in my college because if I start doing that, <clears throat> I will have to make uh, almost uh, 199 out of 200 people to rewrite. So we don't do that. But why don't you try? Why don't you try to write a paper assignment all by yourself? Because you are doing a degree course, you are doing a degree program, just try. It may not be easy in the sense that you, you may not be able to write it that easy when you copy paste, because it, it can be done in half an hour. But if you're writing a paper, it takes at least two to three weeks because you have to uh, submit, then you have to get it corrected. Everything you have to do by all by yourself. But at the end of the day, you learn how to write an assignment. So when you go for high studies in a reputed institution, especially in uh, colleges uh, or universities outside Kerala, India, or maybe outside Kerala, but some of the best universities in the world, then you have a problem. They will not be happy if you copy paste and you can easily be caught. And once you are caught, you are considered as a person who has done or violated the academic ethics of that particular university. Every university has an honor code where you have to adhere to certain rules and practices where 
you you have to be uh, not be stealing somebody else's ideas so this is called honor code plagiarism is not allowed right and in india plagiarism is by and large allowed because we don't have a database in us you can't submit somebody else's assignment because everything is uh, backed up by data this data whoever presents an assignment the data is available in the university website so if you copy paste they can easily get hold of you so unfortunately india will take a long time to implement any such devices so at till then you are very scot free you can move around without much of a problem so let us come to that topic how do you plan how do you write and how do you revise this is actually meant for the activity that you write after your pg or maybe into research but university examination uh, writing in the university examination i'll be taking a special care and will be mentioning that okay come to the next slide so whatever i have you can take a screenshot uh if you like a particular slide you can take a screenshot and if you want this slide to be shared i can do that with the dr prem and no issue and otherwise you just listen to when uh, maybe what is on my left side i may not be reading uh, i'll be reading only the main headings because uh, otherwise we will not have time to go through all that so one of the most common assignments for college students is called academic writing academic essays you have been writing essays right from your plus 2 i think plus 2 i think you require only 200 words or so but in colleges you need to write about 300 words and your assignments are supposed to be between 300 and 400 words and that is one of the most common method of assessing students and i am very sure you will be you are evaluated based on your assignments and for internal evaluation you have special marks for this submit submission of assignments on time right okay that is the, that you are very familiar with already and you are also asked to answer a question in a set of paragraph structured in a logical manner when you write an assignment or an essay in the examination what you do is you arrange four or five paragraphs maybe six or seven but depending upon the size into a logical coherence this is the most important activity so uh, i i don't know whether you at any point of time thought about how you are actually writing an essay i don't know i am not very sure so somebody can even uh, discuss i mean it it with me uh, after this particular slide see have you ever in your, your your capacity as a student thought of how you actually wrote this particular essay at the end of the essay you completed the essay in the examination hall and have you ever thought how you did this what was the starting point and what is the point after that yeah somebody is unmute yeah uh please check and mute yourself prashad i'll mute yeah. everybody yeah that's fine okay prashad yeah. i think you will have to unmute yes yeah yeah i i i i think uh i'm audible yeah, right audible. yes yes yeah. yeah so uh i i am interested to know whether how many of you remember actually what is the process that you have undergone you have completed your examination in 3 hours and came out of maybe 2 and 1/2 hours and came out of the examination hall have you ever thought of how you compose this particular paragraph into order or are you are you very sure that your essay was good excellent how do you know that so when you check that you actually understand there is no much preparation done by you for that you just wrote what came to your mind right you just wrote what came to your mind you never thought of any cohesion you never thought of any logical coherence you just wrote whatever came to your mind which you thought right and if you are given another chance to improvise or maybe rewrite this i am very sure you will not be uh, doing uh, maintaining or maybe keeping the same paragraphs same sentences again you will definitely redo that or improvise that why because majority of you including myself don't think that i was different including myself i wrote my essay for the first time in the examination hall i never wrote my essay before examination hall so can you just imagine our devdas padikal or virat kohli playing a new shot in the game in the actual game or do they practice it before right you have been watching olympic games now do you think pv sindhu ever tried a new shot during the actual match no 
she would definitely try and improvise and make it perfect before coming to the court but how many of us are doing that so uh, my first point i would like to say is that examination writing is a kind of a game and you should have a game plan especially when you say that india uh, as a cricket team or, or as a hockey team you don't play with australia the way you play with england you don't play with uh, england the way you play with sri lanka or pakistan because every team demands a different kind of approach but we write the examination english examination malayalam examination and uh, physics examination everything is written in the same manner so there is something very seriously wrong somewhere maybe your orientation is wrong maybe the, the you are not told how to do it so there are so many issues so our attempt myself and primanand we are into uh, unwinding these activities so we have been uh, programmed in a particular manner we are unprogramming you actually so you need to be unprogrammed because there are different approaches possible and in your capacity i am very sure you can write much much better than what you write now so your response to a topic in your opinion argument way of looking that is what you present so that is how you present a essay it involves brainstorming though you may not get that chance in the examination hall you can't brainstorm with anybody else except yourself consulting resources that is also not possible in the examination hall you have to consult and then go but when you write a research paper you can consult uh, online or maybe you can read books and you can keep the books with you before you write and uh, we are also interested when I mean, if i am given a chance i would like to have uh, my students taking books to the examination hall right then i think i can have a real assessment so you think that if you are allowed to carry books into the classroom you can write better no you just write as you write without the books so we would like to have examination i mean there are in good universities in harvard for example in harvard you can you can know that there are uh, semesters with no examination but don't be excited because a semester without examination meaning you have to do everything as internal assessment so your performance in the classroom listening skill everything will be evaluated but they have a student teacher ratio of 1 is to 12 or 1 is to 13 which makes it very easy whereas i have 1 is to 125 i mean i can't even remember the names of my students in the classroom as when i i learned the names even uh, by after a year or so right when they are reduced to maybe 40 or 50 so this is happening so involves brainstorming consulting resources gathering ideas writing drafts this is what has to happen before so if you want to write good answers in the examination what is prerequisite write before write uh, drafts before you actually write the examination practice before you actually take it out in the match many of you have watched the uh, uh, badminton uh, day, day before yesterday when sindhu lost to the world number 1 and the simple reason is that world number 1 had some of the secret shots unexpected kind of a shots if you watch the uh, play you would have definitely known especially when they were leveled at 18 18 she scored three points to take the match that was a turning point i think i mean i'm not a great uh, observer of badminton i mean though i played badminton during my college days so that was a crucial if sindhu could survive there and take the first set i think she had every possibility to win the match but second second set she was I mean, almost uh, she she lost the confidence and maybe uh, gave up very easily so your uh, essay should have three three parts this is this is uh, everybody know and this is something very fundamental introduction body and conclusion then how do you go a, a, ahead with that is my next question one introductory paragraph an essay should have one introductory paragraph three to four body paragraphs and a concluding paragraph concluding paragraph need not be a big paragraph it can be two three sentences or it can even be embedded with the last paragraph it doesn't matter but university insists that you should write three and a half a page or maybe three pages three pages many three sides to complete this particular essay so what should be the introduction what should be the body paragraph and what is the conclusion introduction introduction should have thesis statement thesis statement is the argument of the essay 
maybe you get a question that no, consider even we can't dikillalo yeah, yeah. Uh, prem you are uh, oh, you sorry, need to sorry. mute yeah yeah sorry yeah uh, yeah it happens at times <clears throat> uh, so uh, you get an information like you get a question like uh, consider macbeth as a tragedy right macbeth is a shakespearean play as you know so what do you what is your thesis statement you can either say yes it's a tragedy or you can even argue it is not a tragedy depending upon your your resources you can definitely argue so that is what you call thesis statement or maybe you get a question like uh, consider when well, sorry uh, romanticism in words words uh, tendenda bay lines or maybe or don't intimations of immortality or cold just kubla khan you just say that uh, that particular poem is a typical romantic poem or you can say that there are uh, not many romantic elements in that particular poem because depending upon your argument you can argue about it so what is your argument that is called thesis statement it should come in the first paragraph background information how do you start a essay very often you start the essay with shakespeare is a famous writer right okay next essay on shelley shelley is a famous writer next essay maybe on matthew arnold matthew arnold is a famous writer so all writers are famous so why don't you change that why don't you change it different right why don't you uh, not have a same opening sentence or maybe first sentence for everything as if you never know any other sentence right see uh, straight drive is a uh, classic shot in english i mean in uh, cricket but if i attempt to straight drive all the six balls that a particular bowler delivers i mean i'll be out in the second ball maybe first ball like i can give it straight drive so i decide the shot depending on the bowling if bowler uh, decides to bowl on my uh, offside i take a shot which is ideal for the offside bowling if he bowls on the onside or bowls straight or a full toss i take a stand accordingly so it depends uh, by and large it depends on where the bowler actually bowls the ball so similarly you have to have this kind of background information and should be placed accordingly in the exam i have examples i'll be coming to that and a brief explanation of the topic first paragraph may not have details but it has uh, certain inputs uh, giving you information on general idea and my slide uh, photograph on my left side has a detailed information on how you should have a general statement thesis statement the topic number paragraph 1 paragraph 2 which you can take a screenshot right if you are not able to take a screenshot i can share it share the presentation with you with your uh, head of the department dr primanath and body is a major part of it and you majority of you think that because just now dr prem was uh, talk, talking about the valuation majority of you think or maybe you have heard that college teachers are lazy lot people they don't read they read only the first sentence and maybe come to the conclusion maybe true i agree with you perfectly if you give me a paper and just show me the first three lines i can exactly tell you how much this student is going to get right normally normally in the sense uh, if he has written only one page and kept all other pages blank to cheat me well, i'll be wrong if you write a normal 3 hour paper or 2 and 1/2 hour paper and if you show me only the first sentence or maybe first three lines of a answer sheet i can exactly tell where you were you are going to land and it will be i'll be missing the target by 5 marks maximum if i say 60 to 65 it comes there because there is experience right i can i can i mean i've been valued valuing papers for the last 30 years 30 or more so i know exactly where you are going to land but that doesn't mean i will not see your other pages of your paper i am very sure that i am a person who goes through every line every word and if you write one mistake that comes to me before i see the right things teachers are so prone to fighting mistake and that is called teacher syndrome if you have done 10 things right i may not pay attention but if you do a 11th thing wrong immediately i catch it up so teachers are i mean uh, kind of a people who make and of course our reading gets exhausted very soon we underline it here and there so this is something that happens so don't be under the impression that teachers may not look at your or read your papers many teachers 99% i would say or maybe little less 
teachers would definitely read your essays they will read everything that you write and there will be a chief examiner who also reads right then there will be a chairman the chief will go through 10% of what addition has done if my addition has uh valued 100 papers i'll be looking at minimum 10 to 15 papers i'll be revaluing and out of that uh, chairman will be again revaluing total well, i am a chief under me there are 500 papers and there are 10 chiefs there are 5000 papers so chairman will be looking at the next and my criteria for revaluation is very simple whoever scores be before or be, uh, above 55 out of uh, 80 i tend to revalue because irrespective of numbers, I don't play attention to numbers. Whoever scores before 60 plus, if you score 60 plus, I'll definitely revalue. And I'll see whether the 60 is given for the meritorious candidate, right? Otherwise, we'll uh, put blank, I mean, uh, red marks here and there and maybe reduce the marks. Or if you think, I mean, if I consider this is student is very good, I'll increase the marks. And if there is no rising or lowering needed, I'll just maintain the same marks. But very sure that whoever scores good marks, uh, many teachers will revalue. And especially in your college, it happens. Because your college, uh, being autonomous, they value themselves. So don't be under the impression that whatever you write in between, nobody is going to read. No. Everyone one will read whatever you write in between and even across. Right? And conclusion, main uh, part of the uh, essay is a substantiation that is uh, happening. Substantiate meaning you have to elaborate, you have to explain what it is, and elaboration of ideas. And a conclusion that is ending, natural ending of the argument. That is the structure of the essay. Then let, let us now look at how we can write introduction. Right? Introduction atten invites the attention of the reader. I'm very sure majority of you will be reading news stories on mobile. Majority of you will be reading. Uh, I, I am an ardent fan of Google News. And of course, Google has a particular uh, method of showing me what I actually search, they show me. Right? If I am, uh, I, I, I've been searching uh, cricket news, they'll be showing more cricket news. If I search a political news, they'll be showing me political news. So when I see, start reading a particular news, after two or three lines, I immediately get fed up. Then I just change it over. Because if the news story is really good, we have no idea whether it is good or bad. So the introduction should be very fine, smooth. Otherwise, we may not, we would initially lose the interest. Even when you watch a political channel or a, even a film, when you watch the film on TV, you, you tend to take a break. There are certain movies you don't take a break at all. And there are some movies where you take number of breaks. You finish in maybe four sitting or five sitting, right? It happens because the attention of the reader is not being carried or maybe sought. And giving vital in background information. When you write on Wordsworth, what do you do? You give introduction about Wordsworth, his times, romantic period, all other activities. I mean, all essential details you provide. When you write on Shakespeare, provide details on Elizabethan period and all other. When you write on W.H. Auden, give pro provide details on modern writing, 1940 literature and all. Presents a thesis statement, argument. Your argument is then presented. What you're actually going to say in this paper is being presented there and provides outline statements, very general observations, right? You are not going to elaborate any particular point, but make a very general assessment or observation. So introduction is just like, as the name indicates, it is just an introduction, just an initiation to the essay, where you do not elaborate any of the points. You just state these points, that's all. You just state these points, that's all, right? So you have a, uh, my, uh, on my left side, you have a uh, card or a po poster, which you can read and understand yourself. Yeah. yeah. Now let us uh, do how you write body paragraphs. So writing body paragraphs is the most important thing because body paragraphs contains the bulk part of the essay. Only one introductory paragraph and a very small conclusion paragraph. 
so bulk of your essay consists of body paragraphs and what is the body paragraph the purpose of the body paragraph to present an idea one particular paragraph presents one particular idea or maybe two ideas maximum we don't discuss too many ideas into one paragraph you just discuss one idea in one paragraph to present the topic sentence and supporting points it may be necessary to write 5 to 10 sentences in a paragraph a paragraph will definitely have 8 to 10 sentences normally right and it might in your uh, adjudication it might come around maybe half a page or maybe three fourth of a page right and keep in mind that each paragraph is an extension of the main topic and each paragraph contributes to the elaborating point therefore elaborate the point in the body whenever you have a elaboration done in the body you 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 might have said that uh, what's what is a romantic point in the introduction now clarify in what way what's what is a romantic point you might have said that orden is a modern point you clarify in what way orden is a modern point this is exactly what i mean by clarification you may be required to use certain expressions like therefore however hence furthermore nevertheless all these are transitions you use for transition change right to indicate transition of par within paragraph and maybe with uh, over to the next paragraph so this is a very important area this is more important when you write research papers and other activities how you make a transition see you you have finished with one point now you have to move to the next point how do you do it that is called transition right in film it is simply called editing right see uh, one particular scene takes place inside a room and the next scene takes place outside outside or, or maybe on the road so what do you do you have to make this cut and join the other one without the audience actually making a uh, kind of a uh, suspense i mean uh, disbelief right so immediately what happens is that the inside the room the movie or the camera shifts very smoothly into the road outside without making the audience aware that actually it is a turning point you might many of you might have actually seen we never thought about that you might have seen uh, the character whoever it is getting uh, out from the house getting into the car and the next shot will be he entering into the office or maybe entering into the town and or standing in a, uh, being caught in a traffic block so who will drive in between actually uh, you understand that from house of this particular character there are 5 uh, to 10 kilometers uh, to his office then how do you uh, show the person entering to the car and then getting out of the what has happened in between that 10 minutes because that 10 minutes is not very important so they just skip that and you assume that this particular person has traveled right but in reality you have to travel all by yourself right it takes time right if i uh, my office is 10 minute uh, drive from my home i have to drive all the 10 minutes then only i'll reach there but in cinema i can easily show by making an adjustment so this is what exactly happens in a uh, essay as well you have to make a transition a quick change from this to that how do you do that there are some words like however hence for the more nevertheless etc etc then writing body paragraphs <clears throat> it is better to write initial rough drafts using free writing technique this is only for the research papers right for your examination in the hall you never get this kind of a chance you never get a chance to rewrite but i would say it is better if you can read uh, if you finished maybe three paragraphs it is better that you read the three paragraphs very quickly so that a fourth paragraph will be better with when uh, other than you writing the fourth paragraph without reading the first three paragraphs so it is always better for you to read once you finish the thing reading i don't mean you have to read it from beginning to end meticulously you know you just skim through right you don't have much time because now the time is only two and a half hours for you to have the examination right so you have to be in a hurry so just spend some time on that the topic should not be too narrow too broad all, all this is related to research writing so i i'll just skip this particular slide after going through it, it in very quick manner and you need clarifications corrections etc has to be done so when i get a research paper from one of my research scholars because I, right now i am research guide at devi college and i have 
uh, six of my students are doing phd with me so if they send a paper what i do is i, I go through their writing immediately uh, and make suggestions that this point has to be more clear it should be emphatic it should be made very visible right and elaborate this point further and this particular point you need not worry much about that don't elaborate that this sentence is not needed right this is a transition is not good at this point of time you have to continue with the other all these suggestions i'll be making so that that has been presented in my slide as well be conscious of your vocabulary this is one area you need to improve tremendously vocabulary is one area everyone should improve because you are uh, you have joined your degree course with a very limited bank balance that is uh, words a oxford graduate is supposed to know about 5000 to 6000 words indian graduate maybe 3000 half of that right but i am not very sure how many words you have in the bank account i don't know whether you have a fixed deposit or a temporary deposit always better to have at least 1000 words ready it is called academic word list if you are interested uh, you can search for internet for academic word list awl and you get easily 500 words and try to learn these words by yourself and uh, when you take the examination in your final semester be sure that you are rich at least by 500 words right yeah try to replace certain words and expressions that are redundant that has not been used over and over and worn out right so cliched expressions all that you can use and uh, my very humble request to all of you is that please avoid using very very bad yeah such express expression you don't have in english right avoid such expressions very and also including famous and other usual cliched expressions you write in the examination each sentence in a paragraph has a function a sentence may be a topic sentence conclusion transition etc etc but when you write in the examination you may not have time to revise this or or even you may not get a chance to rewrite this so this is valid only for the research papers writing conclusion uh, restate the thesis statement in the conclusion what is a conclusion and what is the introduction introduction you make a hypothesis you say that what so there is a romantic point that is a hypothetical idea you have now argued or you have not substantiated that what so there is a romantic point you just made a point in the body paragraph you substantiate how what so there is a romantic point and in the final conclusion you say that what so there is definitely a romantic point so this is the difference between introduction and conclusion introduction it was not sure in the conclusion it is sure so summarize the points you elaborated in the introduction and body paragraph and with a finish with a concluding remark right you can even use words like to sum up in summary in conclusion finally etc right and uh, and my final point says that returns to the main point of let's say by restating the thesis statement argument of the say you have written in the introduction should be used in the conclusion that is how you conclude your argument this is a recreation of what i have done earlier exactly i i i have done this uh, already uh, this is a duplicate slide actually but i i would like to you to just go through because i have another slide on my left that tells you about uh, introduction body and conclusion this is what i have been telling you again and again body paragraph and introduction this is how you elaborate a body paragraph right focus on the second supporting idea contains the topic sentence the present supporting idea substantiate and explain the supporting idea indicate transition to the next idea see how do you actually transit or maybe make a transition from one paragraph to other because by the time you come to the end of one particular paragraph you can all, you know that what is going to be there in the third paragraph so just make a statement that actually uh, bridges into the next one just like you you merge roads with a bridge pa ende paragile ningal kaanunnathu golden bridge aanu that is in california uh, that bridges between the uh, city of san francisco and other city so any bridge would actually bridge between two roads so it should be something similar to that a conclusion of a body paragraph is a kind of a bridge to the next you move from one area to the next area
body paragraph for number four and conclusion. This is also I've explained, right? Now we will come to our topic. I have about 10 minutes more to this, tell you about descriptive essay. And this is just an example. This is my point today. How do you describe? And just look at the picture now, right? You are going to describe the tree, right? So you have a tree in mind. Maybe you have a mango, jackfruit tree, whatever, whatever. You coconut, any, any, any tree in mind, right? Fig tree or maybe cherry tree, whatever, apple. Now you have that in mind. So how do you write a descriptive essay is my topic. A descriptive essay is a, of a genre of essay that asks the student to describe something, describe something. That is object, person, place, experience, emotion, situation, whatever, whatever. Anything can be described. And what is the language involved in descriptive essay? This genre encourages the student ability to create a written account of a particular experience. You are all good in describing things. I think whenever you come to college, you describe at least one day's activity to your best friend, right? So you, you, you are very good in describing. Some of the stu my students are so good in describing things, right? So they, what, what you should have to describe something beautifully is the vocabulary. Right? We can do better in Malayalam maybe because you have better words or more number of words in Malayalam. You are uh, less competent in English because you have less words in English. Whoever has an excellent bank balance will survive. So what is more this genre allows for a great deal of artistic freedom. Descriptive writing allows greater freedom. You can go on describing because nobody has seen that. You are the only person who has seen and you are the only person describing. Others all, all listeners. So descriptive essay demands or let loses your imagination. You can write whatever you want. And it, it is the, the language should be somewhat a kind of a description. I'll, I'll be coming to that. So your ability to use language in a creative way. It can be creative, need not be realistic. You can say anything you like, right? Need not be even realistic. Uh, take time to brainstorm, use clear and concise language, choose a vivid language. Whenever you describe something, use diverse language or maybe very clear cut language so that other person will understand it easily. Use your senses, senses in not in a sense of sensibility. You can use images pertaining to five senses. We have five senses, right? Sight, smell, etc. Et so all this must be used. You have imagery drawn to all these different ways of ideas. And what are you thinking about? What it should, you should make the other person feel it, right? Especially when you describe lemon squeezing, for example, right? Just start describing a lemon squeezing. And after you describe, after one minute, everybody will be wet. I mean, the mouth will be watering. Or you feel the taste of lemon in your uh, lips or maybe in your tongue. So this is happens because naturally lemon is a too familiar a thing. And you all know what happens if a lemon is dropped to your tongue straight away, right? So it will be like that. So leave the reader with a clear impression and be organized. These are the tips for writing descriptive essays. How to write a descriptive essay? I've given an example. This you may please take a screenshot and just read this. This is an, a typical example of a descriptive essay where he describes something very personal to the audience, right? Descriptive essay. And I also have uh, done for you what is a descriptive essay and how it has to be uh, read. You can just take a screenshot. I don't need to waste my time to for you to pause and wait you make you read this now narrative essay after descriptive essay we'll move to narrative essay narrative essay is a type of an essay that has a single motive a central point around which the whole narrative revolves and what is the difference between narrative and descriptive narrative as a plot right it's a kind of a story right and there are commonalities between descriptive narrative in narrative you find descriptive versions right in narrative, you, you very often employ descriptive methods, not the other way around. 
narrative is the language or maybe the the platform you use to tell a story descriptive is just describing an event suppose you have a beautiful dream yesterday you describe it it's a description not a narration because that may not have a beginning or an end dreams are very often um, uh, seen without a beginning or an end nobody has a, a story like a dream which begins in a particular place and end, ends in a particular no even the characters you see in the dream you may not imagine uh, remember properly right so what what happens is that a narrative should have a proper beginning middle and end where a descriptive essay may not have a beginning middle and end but it describes a particular thing person event or whatever right without a proper beginning or middle a narrative tells a story in most cases it is personal right just like stories you read by writers and all incidents happening characters everything will be moving around this particular story and it is it tests your ability to express your experience just like a descriptive story uh, demands your experience to describe narrative story uh, demands your experience to narrate right and it it there are, there are number of descriptions involved in the narrative story cinema okay edukumbodathana ningalku ellarku ariya cinemayile tharala ayiru description undavu as well as you have narration in the movie and this is an example of a narrative uh, text which you can take a screenshot my, uh, it's a narration about my grandpa and uh, the experience and i have earmarked title introduction beginning of the story middle events end of the story conclusion this is a very short story very short story Uh, can uh, because of the time cons or limit of the screen size i have selected a short story very short story it can be a bit longer as well right yeah with that we come to the end of the presentation today now uh, i think you can uh, ask me questions uh, you are free to interact yeah yes. dr prem prem and yeah yeah you are yeah. here So now please, time for uh...